counteroffensive is into its second month, and progress has been slow. The challenges are vast. Russia's war in Ukraine is the world's largest armed conflict since World War II. This war is being fought on the ground with traditional weaponry like tanks and bullets, but also in the skies with newer technologies like drones. A report in May found Ukraine was losing more than 10,000 drones per month. Well, my next guest says swarms of drones are the future of war. Eric Schmidt ran Google for many years, but more recently advised the Pentagon as the chair of the Defense Innovation Board. He now chairs the Special Competitive Studies Project, a think tank focused on technology and national security. I should note I am a senior advisor at Schmidt Futures, his philanthropic initiative. Eric Schmidt, pleasure to have you. Good to be back. So um, you were recently in Ukraine, and a lot of the, your concerns stem from that. Uh, let, let's first just get a sense of the lay of the land. Um, what, do, to you, what does the battlefield look like? Who has the advantage? The thing that's shocking is how big this war is. It's a thousand kilometers long, and since 2014, the Russian side has dug themselves in in this horrific way. So if you were a Ukrainian soldier with your commander saying go across this five kilometer disputed area, you'd have to get through the tanks, the mines, the machine guns, their drones. You get to the other side, you do your killing, and then the back part of Russia kills you. It's an insurmountable task. I was stunned to read how many shells the Russians are using. 60,000 a day. The world production in the West can accommodate about 5,000 a day. I guess the Russians have been building artillery for about 50 years, and they have an infinite supply. 60,000 a day. Now, I mean, my math, you're talking about something like 20 million a year. I mean, so it's it's to, crazy. To, today, this is a World War I artillery war with people dug in. How incredible, 100 years later, we haven't come up with another way. If you're the Ukrainians trying to break through, you want to get to the Sea of Azov, you have to break through this initial line below Zaporizhia, for example, and then you have to make a corridor. Well, as you go through your corridor, they're bombing you as well. And now the bombing is precision bombing, exactly. right? Because you can target more accurately. And the American doctrine is that you would always do such infantry moves with air power, which the Ukrainians don't have. And the air power comes in, cleans the path, and then the American gets, gets the other side running back, and then they start to win. We, meaning the Ukrainians, the U.S., the West, need a sol Ukrainians. How many drones are they, are they using a week or a month? They're on track to using a couple hundred thousand drones in a year. Most drones only survive one or two flights before they fail or they're blocked. I was shocked at how good the Russians were at electronic warfare and jamming. Basically, everything you send into this battlefield, which is quite narrow, by the way, uh, the rest of the country is fine. I suspect on both sides. They, they jam everything. GPS is jammed, but also communications is jammed. So normal drones don't work. So the Ukrainians have taken cheap drones and added additional antenna, antennas. One of the things that I learned was something called a kamikaze drone, which is a $400 Chinese drone that carries a small payload that moves so fast you can't shoot it down. I had thought that that was the innovation of the war. Two generals yesterday told me that I'm wrong and that what they really need are cruise missile drones, which can go really far and carry with wings and can carry more payloads. I don't think the Ukrainian drone strategy is completely formed, but they're building a completely new theory of war. And this is where we get to the solution. For you, the only way the Ukrainians can break through these lines is with massive numbers of drones. Massive number of drones or massive number of human casualties on both sides. The beauty of the drone is it can take out the other side's military target without collateral damage, right? We are very concerned about the, the propagation of this war against other countries, but I'm very concerned about its effect on civilians, both the Russians and the Ukrainians. The important thing about a drone is it's a very, very targeted solution. It's very inexpensive. I think the goal that we should have for Ukraine is to establish the principle that there will never be another land war where you can invade successfully, that, that respecting the, land, the sovereignty of the land is important. 
If you're mad at them, that's fine. You can negotiate, you can put pressure, but you can't send artillery and flatten cities, which is what the Russians have been doing. How do you get, uh, how do you, how do you get to the solution of, I mean, is there, can the Ukrainians produce hundreds of thousands of drones? They have the money and they have the talent. They haven't figured out how to build all the factories yet. And they have to be built in Ukraine for many, many reasons. So what I know is there are about 60 companies that are building these types of drones. What's interesting is it's just like startups in the sense that they're not particularly well coordinated. They're moving so quickly. Remember, this is all a year old. Their operating systems and software aren't very integrated. They can't speak to each other. All the problems that you would imagine. Now, if it were peacetime, you'd have an overall strategy. You'd get them organized and so forth. What's interesting to me is that this is both a broadband war, but it's also a technology war in the sense that it's innovative. And innovation occurs in small companies, not in the MOD. The Ukrainians were interesting. I think you know as well that the um, Ukrainians set up their drone operation outside the military. And the drone guy, his name is Fedorov, is busy supplying them to the military. But he controls the money. He controls the strategy. They told us that the biggest problem they currently have is that at the moment they're taking these tiny little, essentially, pipe bombs and dropping them onto tanks. And what they want is laser-guided ones, or guided ones, which is America's had for a long time, that can follow the target. Um, again, this is stuff that America did 20 years ago that they're just catching up on. Did it, does, does all this leave you net-net positive, optimistic? I hate to say it, but I think this is going to go on for a long time. There's not enough advantage on either side. I don't think uh, Russia will gain much land, if any. And I think the going is so slow to get across this danger zone, this killing field, that it will take a year or two. Now, of course, there could be breakthroughs, there could be um, Wagner could start running and things like that that we don't, we don't understand. But at the moment, it's much more balanced than the marketing says. They talk about this counteroffensive, which is a, certainly a great idea. They're not ready to do an American style, 100 million people, you know, stay, you know, full power. They don't have the assets. Furthermore, if you put uh, airplanes in the air, they get shot down by Russian surface to air missiles. So it's a really hard problem. One of my friends who was looking at this strategically said, you realize that the Russians have been fighting this way for 100 years. I said, OK. And he said, that means that you have to give them a hard problem to solve. The simple problems, like do this and do that, they're, they're, the other side is too sophisticated. And the Russians are clearly in this to win. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the MCAD TV family. Please like and share MCAD TV. We love you all. Please support MCAD TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.